So here's another quick example of some of the difficulty with trying to create a single character with all these different track layers. So we've added an extra frame into our jump at the end of the animation because I'd like to have the character have a little bit more finesse or style while he's doing his jumping attack. So we're going to have him rotate 360 degrees during his entire jump. So what we're going to need to do in order for that to happen is each one of the rotation parameters needs to be added for all three of our sprites. So what we're going to need to do is kind of guess as to how fast each one of these has to increment in order to create a smooth 360 degree rotation. Let's make ourselves a keyframe at zero and then we're going to take a guess and say he'll swing around maybe negative 150 degrees. And let's see what that looks like. So there we go. He's doing his starting his forward jump. So I would say this would be in between here. Well, first, what we need to do is we need to add a negative 150 degree rotation here so the rotation matches. And then we have to guess that at, uh, let's say, let's, let's take him up to. 220 and see how that looks. See, yeah, that's 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 okay. We can get away with that. So he stopped at negative 220, so this sprite will then have to start at negative 220. And just for the sake of it, let's make him do the full rotation be right before he hits the ball. He'll complete his rotation. Right about there, we'll change this to negative 360 for the full rotation. And if we play the animation, we see he does this cool little flip and he is done. Look at that. So if this was a singular track, we wouldn't have to go in and individually change all of these rotation parameters. We wouldn't have to be manually typing them all in to try to guess when each one is going to happen and try to line it up so it looks like a fluid animation. Uh, we would simply just come to the singular track. We would set the initial rotation at zero. We would set the final rotation at 360 degrees. And then we'd just use the sprite index keyframes to change the sprite index as the rotation happens. This will give you much more control over the precision and smoothness of your animations. Thank you very much.